So, okay, yeah, um, so let's get started. Yeah, we'll continue this week with uh, Mario who will uh, continue his discussion of generalized Rigi flow, I guess, focusing on generalized Rigi tensors. So thanks again, Mario. Yeah, so um, as I was saying in, in previous uh, lectures, um, something is wrong with this. What I, what, I, what I want to do is to explain what are the symmetries of the of the generalized Ricci flow, which is given by this set of partial differential equations for a metric and a two form on a manifold with some fixed uh, cohomology class. So just recall a few things uh, in order to, to exhibit the symmetries of these equations. What we are going to do is to relate this to, to generalized geometry. So recall that given a smooth manifold and a closed three form H, there is um, an associated exact coronal algebraid given by an exact sequence like this, where E is just as a vector bundle, is the tangent plus the cotangent bundle. And uh, there is further structure given by the anchor, which is this map here, sending X plus C to X, where X is a vector field and C is a one form. It has a canonical pairing given by pairing uh, vector fields with one forms and a Dorfman bracket, uh, which is written in this form and it depends on the choice of, of closed three form. And recall that the previous day I was saying that uh, <clears throat> any exact current algebra can be a, or admits a presentation which is precisely of, of this form. So recall that we have uh, an explicit form for the automorphisms of the current algebra. So given our current algebra as before, the automorphisms are explicitly given by pairs FB, where F is a diffeomorphism and B is a two form, satisfying this equation. So the pullback of H by F minus H is T of B. So in particular, the diffeomorphism is preserving the cohomology class of the three form. And there is a specific choice of, of or a specific uh, group operation for for this automorphism group. And then what I want to explain today is this theorem, which tells that uh, the generalized Ricci flow, I will have it this kind of, as we have been describing these days, and, and this natural action functional, whose critical, whose, uh, sorry, which is, a, um, which exhibits the generalized Ricci flow as a gradient flow for a suitable uh, choice of F, uh, admit, a natural embedding into generalized geometry, meaning that um, there is a natural way of describing them in terms of the of geometry in this exact coronal algebra that I described before. Okay, in particular, what we are going to have is that uh, this is going to be preserved by by automorphisms of the coronal algebra. So something I was in explaining the previous day, let me explain it uh, a bit better, is that a hint for this result comes uh, from the relation with two-dimensional sigma models. So recall that the uh, um, generalized Ricci flow, at least the motivation for it comes from, from the theory of two-dimensional sigma models, where it appears via some action function of four maps from a surface sigma into a manifold M, and then uh, we have like a classical field theory with with the with the um, equations of motion and so on, and then there is some complicated quanti quantization procedure uh, whereby generalized Ricci flow appears as a as a renormalization group flow. So if this is if this is the case, then if uh, if this action, uh, which can be cooked up as follows, so if you have a two form. B on the manifold, then this can be thought of as a Lagrangian for maps from a surface into M by sending one of these maps just to the to the integral over the surface to the pullback. So if this if this uh, action has something to do with generalized Ricci flow, then we should be able to to get some information out of or to get some relation between this action functional and the current algebra that we are uh, pursuing. So recall that the critical points were given by uh, vector fields, such that the pullback to the surface of the contraction in the vector field with H is 
uh, is zero where h is t of b. And then what, what I was trying to, to say the other day, maybe is this, that there is a natural action on the space of Lagrangian. So you can think of any of these b's as a Lagrangian, but since the equation of, of motions is the critical points only depend on the on d of b, you can think of the space of closed three forms here morally or abstractly as a space of Lagrangians for these two dimensional field theories. And then there is a natural action of the semi direct product of diffeomorphisms by two forms, which is this, described in this way. <clears throat> I mean, this is the product structure. The action is given by, by this. It's just FB acts on H by the push forward of H minus dB. And the isotropy group for this action at a given closed three form is precisely the automorphisms of the exact current algebra. So, what this means is if by some complicated procedure, I'm able to cook up generalized Ricci flow out of this action. And of course, the, the L2, the L2 norm of the, of the function from sigma to M. Then this should have something to do uh, with, with this, uh, with this uh, current, current algebraic automorphisms. Okay. So in order to, to do so, uh, let me go to, to generalize, uh, generalize geometry. So as I was mentioning the other day, well, general geometry was uh, introduced by Hitchin in this seminal paper. And then the main idea is that uh, uh, it is based on two premises. The first one is to replace the tangent bundle by tangent plus the cotangent bundle. And then the second one is to replace the leap bracket on, on vector fields by the Dorfman bracket on sections of tangent plus cotangent. And just trying to proceed in a similar way as, as we do in Riemannian geometry, then we find some very natural um, uh, geometric structures which are related to generalized Ricci flow. So let me go, yeah, just to mention uh, that part of the uh, structures that we are going to use, in particular generalized, generalized connections, are going to be uh, or were considered uh, firstly in a paper, in this nice paper by Marco Gualtieri about brains on, on Poisson varieties. Okay, so so far so good. Let me now pause. This was just mainly a summary of, of the previous day. And now I'm going to pause a little bit and go back to, to the definition of, of, of the generalized Ricci tensor and so on. Okay, so I'm going to, to introduce things more slowly now. So recall that uh, if we have an exact current algebra E, then a generalized metric on E is either a reduction of the, of the bundle of orthogonal frames for the split signature metric to the maxima compact or a Rankin positive subbundle inside E. So because uh, N is the dimension of the manifold, tangent plus cotangent has dimension, has a rank to N, and therefore this automatically determines an orthogonal complement, which we call B minus, <coughs> says that the metric restricted to B plus is positive definite, and the metric restricted to B minus is negative definite. And alternatively, you can think of, of the generalized metric as an endomorphism, says that G squared equals the identity, and this defines something which is positive. Okay. This is, or, this is important that this is an orthogonal endomorphism. And this G is just uh, given by uh, comparing, um, say, the natural the natural metric that you that you have on <coughs> on E with this other metric. Say, okay. So a couple of things that I was also mentioning the other day. If we choose some isotropic splitting, this is like the abstract definition. But if we choose an isotropic splitting. So we see E as tangent plus cotangent explicitly. Then we have the following form for generalized metrics. These are just given by the following subbundles, X plus minus GX plus BX, where G is a usual Riemannian metric on the manifold, and B is a, is a two-form, okay? So this is the way you describe the B plus bundle and the B minus bundle inside and see the inside E. And it is an easy exercise to check that restricted to B plus, the metric that you find is precisely the Riemannian metric G. 
understood to be minus is minus the Riemannian metric. And if you want to see explicitly what is this endomorphism, then you can look up this explicit form for it. An important thing about generalized metrics is that in order to do calculations, so on and so forth, then it is interesting to observe that if we have a generalized metric on this uh, exact current algebra with, with uh, for, some, for some prescribed close three form H0, then the generalized metric determines a preferred isotropic splitting. It means that it determines a preferred presentation of the, of the, of the current algebra in such a way that we have the usual structure for the pairing, but the bracket is no longer described in terms of H0, but is described in terms of a preferred H in the cohomology class, which is H0 plus TP. Okay. And then this is the this is the presentation of the bracket, please. Good. So the idea is to understand uh, generalized Ricci flow as generated by by a vector field in the space of generalized metrics. If we choose an isotropic splitting uh, by the thing I, I just showed you, then generalized metrics are in correspondence with just Riemannian metrics on M times two forms. And then just by using the different properties of the generalized metric as thought of as an endomorphism, the fact that it is orthogonal and the fact that it is close to the identity, then you can describe the tangent space to the space of generalized metrics as the following. So this is given by G phi in endomorphism of E, such that phi is skew orthogonal and phi anti-commutes with G. The fact that G, the, the, phi, the, the fact that phi anti-commutes with G, it tells you that it is exchanging the B plus bundle with the B minus bundle and the B minus bundle with the B plus bundle. And therefore, and this combined with the fact that this is a skew, it tells you that a variation of generalized metric is uniquely determined by the restriction of phi to the B minus bundle, for example. You could do the same with the B plus bundle. So it is uniquely determined by an homomorphism from B minus to B plus. Okay. Any questions so far? I'm just recalling what I was saying the other day. I will pause in a minute. Okay, so in order to, to uh, achieve our goal, which is to describe generalized Ricci flow as a natural flow for, for generalized metrics in, in, in a current algebra, uh, we need to introduce the following device, which is a divergence operator, which is an, a map from smooth sections of E to smooth functions, satisfying the following Leibniz rule with respect to the anchor map. So d of f of e for f a function on the manifold and e a section is given by f d b of e plus p e of f. And the prototypical example of this is the following. If you fix a generalized metric, in particular, you have uh, an ordinary metric in the manifold, and then you can cook up a divergence operator by projecting x plus t in the splitting given by the generalized metric into the vector field. So I, I use the anchor to project into x. And then I do lead derivative of, of the volume divided by the volume. Or if you want the trace of, of the Levitch beta connection applied to nabla. This is the prototypical example. So as I was mentioning the other day, this is. Um, useful for keeping or this the idea is that this this keeps track of the conformal geometry of tangent plus cotangent meaning that the the tangent plus cotangent has a preferred uh, metric with a split signature and therefore we are in principle not allowed to do conformal rescalings of the ambient metric and this device of divergences is enabling us to to keep track of of some sort of virtual uh, conformal rescalings of the of the generalist metric. Okay, so what I want to <clears throat> to explain today is the following proposition. So associated to a pair G given by a generalist metric and div a divergence, there are curvature quantities. One is a generalist Ricci tensor, 
which is going to be an endomorphism of tangent plus cotangent, which in some cases is going to allow us to define the generalized Ricci fluid. And the other one is a generalized uh, scalar curvature, a scalar, which is the analog of the scalar curvature in, in Riemannian geometry. And in this, uh, with these two quantities in hand, we should be able to describe, on the one hand, generalized Ricci flow, when we, in particular, take a generalized metric and its associated divergence, as in the example here. And on the other hand, the uh, generalized einstein hill reaction, who's, uh, or, which enables to describe um, generalized Ricci flow as a, as a gradient flow, in some sense. OK, so any questions so far? What is F in the <clears throat> in the definition of the F at the bottom? Like there's a capital F of G in divergence and it has E to the minus F. Yeah, so this is for, so the generalized uh, Einstein-Hilbert action is going to be for a particular choice of divergences. Not all divergences are going to allow to, to define this quantity of, of the scalar curvature. And these are divergences which are exact in the sense that they differ from the remaining divergences by an exact term. Something which is in the, in the kernel of the anchor map and it's a one form which is not, no, no, not only close, but exact. So I'm, I'm assuming that my, 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 uh, my divergence is of a special type for defining this function. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So I'm going to do something different now, which is to go to the whiteboard. Do you see this properly? Yeah. Can you see? It? Yep. Yeah, we can see it. So let me try this. What I'm going to do now is to uh, explain why and how we can construct these two quantities, the generalized Ricci tensor and the generalized uh, scalar curvature. I'm not sure if, if I will have time to describe the generalized scalar curvature, but at least I will give you a, an idea. So I'm going to fix the color is horrible. Okay. It's going to be an exact quarter algebra. And the idea is to, in order to define generalized Ricci tensor, is try to follow the principles of remaining geometry. So how do you define Ricci tensor in remaining geometry? Well, you, you, you first define curvature, and in order to do that, you first define the Lebesgue beta connection. So let's try to define a Lebesgue beta connection for a generalized metric on an exact coulomb algebra. Okay. So this definition, as far as I know, is due to Alexei Yevan two. So a generalized connection on E is given by an operator from sections of E into sections of E dual tensor E, satisfying two properties. One is that the derivative with respect to A of FB, so I think of this as a usual connection, replacing tangent by tangent plus cotangent, if you wish, is the anchor map applied to A acting on the function times B plus F DAB. So here F is a function on the manifold and A and B are sections. Okay. <clears throat> and the second property is that since everything uh, on, the, on the current algebra has to be compatible with the pairing, I'm going to assume that if I apply the anchor to some element A and I act on the product of B and C, 
this is d a b c plus d um, <coughs> a sorry plus um, a sorry plus b d a c okay so this is just the use of formula for compatibility of um of a connection uh, with respect to a with respect to some metric with the with the extra uh, decoration of the fact that we can take derivatives with respect to the cotangent directions and furthermore that in order to take derivatives of a function like this pairing i need to uh, compose with the ancoma okay so i have this this definition of of generalized connection then i'm going to say that given G a generalized metric I'm going to say that D is G compatible if the action of this G of this D on G is zero. You think of G as an endomorphism, G is an endomorphism with special properties. And this is the like the usual action of, of a connection on, on a <coughs> on an endomorphism acting by um, by um, SQ, I'm, let, let me just write it. DG acting on A is going to be D of G of A minus G of DA. Okay. And you can easily check that this condition here is equivalent to the fact that the generalized uh, connection preserves the B plus bundle for any A in sections of D. Of course, here I mean that acting on sections of B plus, it goes to B plus. And because of the compatibility uh, of the generalized connection with, with the pairing here, if this preserves uh, B plus, it also preserves B minus. Okay. So in order to define some sort of levitz beta connection, we need some notion of torsion, and there is a natural one in general geometry. So given the uh, generalized connection, then I can define a tensor, TD, which is a section of lambda three of phi dual, defined in the following way, TD, of A, B, C is going to be D, A, B minus D, B, A minus A, B, C plus D, A, C, B. So what is, what, what are, what are the, the first observation for this related to this formula? So here you see this um, oops. Okay. this quantity here is like the usual formula for the torsion. If I think of the as an ordinary connection replacing the Lie bracket by, by the Dorfman bracket, okay? And the other thing I'm he doing here is just pairing with another element C by using the, the ambient pairing. The problem with this formula is that this is not a tensorial quantity and you introduce this other correction in order to make it tensorial, okay? There is an explicit formula for, for this, but let me, let me not go into, into this details. So any questions so far? Can you say why is it skew symmetric with C? Why is it skew symmetric with C? What why do you mean? It, like it's supposed to be yeah skew symmetric in A, B, and C? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean you just apply the you just apply the fact that 
uh, this d is uh, compatible with the with the pairing and the actions of the current algebra. It follows from that. There is no. And you can also, you can in in case of of an exact current algebra, which is the case we are considering, you can just calculate the most general formula for a for a generalized connection, and you will see it explicitly. Because what happens is that if I have a if I take nabla some uh, connection on T, just an affine connection on the tangent bundle, and I is identify E with tangent plus cotangent, then you can cook up a generalized connection out of this nabla by setting D of X plus T, Y plus eta equal to nabla X, Y plus nabla star X, eta. And this is the dual the dual uh, uh, connection corresponding to, to the, I mean, the induced connection on, on one forms. And you can uh, very explicitly calculate what is the, the torsion for this thing and see that for any other modification of the generalized connection that you that you cook up, this gives you some excuse symmetric contribution. So this is another way of calculating. Okay, thanks for the equation. Okay, so, so far so good. Our aim is to understand whether we have some Levitz beta connection to be able to construct curvature out of that. So then we have the following lemma, which is like a weak Kosu formula. So recall that the Kostul formula is the formula that enables you to express Levitz beta connection in terms of a Lie bracket and the metric on a remaining manifold. So the, the Kostul formula says as follows, this weak Kostul says as follows. So D is a generalized connection on E, which is compatible with a generalized metric. <clears throat> and we assume that D is torsion free. Then we have the following. If I take a minus a section of B minus, let me put it like this, A plus minus plus minus and B plus minus in gamma B plus minus. If, we, if I take sections in B plus and B minus and I take derivatives of elements of B plus with respect to elements of B, mi of B minus, then I get a formula which is as follows. So here by plus, what I mean, when, whenever I write a sub plus, I mean the projection into the plus component. So A plus is the projection into plus of some A. Okay. And similarly, we have that if I take, well, let me write here, the A plus, this is one formula. The other formula is that T A plus B minus equals, oops, can I move this? Yeah, thanks. And um, the A plus B minus equals A plus B minus minus. And this is just, this uh, operations here are just constructing, constructed out of projections into the plus and minus bundles. So P, plus minus are the orthogonal projections into B plus minus and the Dorfman bracket. Okay, so this is very analog to, to what happens in, in Riemannian geometry where you express everything in terms of uh, in terms of just the, the Lie bracket and the metric. Okay, so how do you prove these two formula? Well, this is very simple. The proof is very simple. Let me show you for one of those. So if you take, uh, for example, A minus and B plus, then you have that zero equals to the torsion A minus B plus C plus. So A minus in B minus B plus C plus B plus. 
if you apply the torsion to a minus b plus c plus, then what you obtain just applying the formula of the torsion and using the fact that the b plus is orthogonal to b minus, you just obtain that this is d a minus b plus minus a minus b plus c plus. It's just the product with C plus of a DA, DA minus B plus minus the Dorfman bracket of A minus B plus. But since this is in B plus, the only part that survives of this bracket is the plus part. And since C plus is arbitrary, it runs over any element in, in B plus, then this tells you that this thing here has to be zero. Okay, so it's just a simple calculation. So <clears throat> this, what this tells us is that if I give you given G, a generalized metric, if I aim to construct a Levitz beta connection, if D is such that D of G is zero, and this has zero torsion, then the only freedom is in the way I take derivatives of the of elements in the B plus bundle with respect to elements in the B plus bundle and elements in the B minus bundle with respect to elements in the B minus bundle. So whenever I have a generalized connection, since I have a splitting of E into B plus and B minus, and a generalized connection enables me to take derivatives with respect to any element in E, then I have four operators. Either I take derivatives of B plus with respect to E plus, B plus with respect to E minus, B minus with respect to E minus, or B minus with respect to B plus, okay? So the only freedom is in these pure type operators. The other two are constrained by, by this quick cost so forth. Yes. Like, I just wonder yes. if uh, at the outset of the discussion of connections, is there some conceptual reason why you would think in the first place that you would want to differentiate with respect to sections of E? I mean, you have E, it's just some vector bundle. I mean, you have regular connections even like metric compatible one. I mean, is it just because you want to define something like torsion and so? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. So if you... I mean, it works out very naturally. I just sort of wonder. I mean, I guess the, the idea is that whenever you're doing generalized geometry, at least you are trying to play the game of replacing the tangent bundle by tangent plus cotangent. So anything you do should be done. Uh, anything you do in ordinary geometry should be done by replacing tangent by, by tangent plus cotangent. So I guess it's natural, but I don't have a, a better sure, yeah, no. explanation okay. of why this is. Okay. So, so let me now show you the following lemma that if I give you G a generalized metric and I give you uh, then on E on my exact coronal algebra, then there exists some D which is compatible with the metric with a generalized metric and torsion free. Let me show you how this works. And furthermore, I'm going to show you more. And it's not unique, not unique. And this is an important difference with ordinary Riemannian geometry. So the proof, is as follows. 
So as I told you, the only freedom is in the choice of pure type operators, in the way we take derivatives of plus with respect to plus, minus with respect to minus. And if I identify, identify T uh, with B plus minus via the inverses for the anchor map, <clears throat> then I can describe very explicitly what are these mixed operators. Then it follows that if I take the Dorfman bracket of x minus gx, this leaves in b minus with y plus gy, and then I project into plus, then this is the projection into plus of nabla plus xy, where nabla plus is a connection with skew symmetric torsion given as follows, nabla gxy is just the Levitz beta connection of the Riemannian metric determined by g. Recall that a Riemannian metric determines in particular, a generalized metric determines in particular a, a, a Riemannian metric, plus a half of g minus one of h x y dot. Okay. And now, since we have this identification and we have been able to describe very explicitly what are the operators. I mean, this is similar for the other case. So if I take here plus and minus, then what I will get is uh, the nabla minus connection with a minus here, okay? So if I put here minus plus and here plus minus, I will get plus minus. And here plus minus is plus minus, okay? Then I have natural connections on the, on the, on the B plus bundle and the B minus bundle, when I take derivatives with respect to the other, the other bundle. Now what I do is just copy and paste these connections in, in order to cook up my, my pure type operators. So choose uh, where is this? So would you choose D plus plus and D minus minus, the pure type operators for the generalized connection, identifying D plus plus with nabla plus and D minus minus with nabla minus. This is the uh, this idea is due to, to Marco Gualtieri, and he calls this the bismuth connection associated to, to the to the generalized metric. Okay. Uh, what is the miracle for about this connection? Well, the miracle about this uh, this generalized connection is that my d my d defined as as I just said is g compatible. And furthermore, the torsion is special. So the torsion a priori is an element in lambda three, but the torsion of this connection is an element in lambda three of B plus, plus lambda three of B minus. And because of this fact, you can kill the torsion. So now you cook up this zero to be D minus a third of the torsion of D. And this does the work. Okay, so this is the this is a, a torsion free G compatible connection. So this is torsion free and G compatible. Okay. So we have one. Are there are there more? Yeah, in fact, there are more of these generalized connections because if you take an element, for example, A plus in the sections of B plus, then you can deform this thing by doing the following. 
I define a new I define a new connection by modifying the pure type operator. For example, plus with respect to plus, as follows. At, I take this zero a plus b plus, and then I add a term which behaves formally like the modification of the levitz beta connection when you have when you have a, a conformal rescaling. So this is uh, a plus b plus. <clears throat> Sorry, this should be e, not a. Uh, e plus, and then you have minus e plus b plus a plus. So as I said, this term here is corresponds to the modification of, of the Levitch the Levitch beta connection of a metric when you do a conformal rescaling of the metric. It's if you identify tangent with B plus, you will see this very explicitly. So this is like a a bail bail term. Yep. Does this but does this modification come from a conformal rescaling? Uh, no, 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 not necessarily. It is so. Whenever you have the other day, I was talking about bail structures. So whenever you have a bail structure on a manifold, you have an associated and a conformal class. For an element in the conformal class, you have an associated uh, uh, Levitch beta connection. And and this is the analog of, of, of that. And you can think of, I mean, if you can think of it in this way. If you do conformal rescaling of a metric by some function, then the new Levitch beta connection is going to depend only on D of F of the other function. And now you can formally replace D of F by any one form. And this is what you are doing here. Okay. But you are only in this formula you are only taking the orthogonal part of this modification. Because when you do conformal rescaling, you 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 have one one piece which goes into, into the conformal group, into the Lie algebra of the conformal group. And here you are dropping that that bit. But it's very it's analog to that to that picture. But this is still a metric connection. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas when you res when you do when you change the Levitivita connection, it won't be metric for the original. Right. Precisely what, what you do with this formula is to, to drop the drop the bit, which is a, a, which is a proportional to the identity endomorphism, which is not a skew orthogonal. Yeah. Yeah. So now I tell you that this new connection that I define, it also it is also torsion free and G compatible. So what are we modifying with this with this change? Well, precisely what we are modifying when we do this change is the divergence operator corresponding to the generalized connection. So let me explain that. So here it, the proof ends, but let me explain you why this makes sense related to what I said before. So if my if I take this zero in the proof it turns out that I can cook up a divergence operator associated to this zero, which acting on E is the trace with respect to the metric on the current algebra of the zero of E. And sorry, I shouldn't have said this thing because you don't need this thing. It's just a, a natural trace. So if you have this zero on E, this is a naturally an endomorphism. And you just take trace. So this is naturally in endomorphisms of E. So what happens is that when you do when you take D of E plus, the divergence of the new generalized connection is precisely modified, or let me write it this way. This is a 
trace of yeah trace of the zero e plus um, e plus e okay and I should have written a, a different uh, um, name for this e but this is this has nothing to do with the with the projection of e so let me let me write it here an a for example. Okay, so this is what you're doing. You are modifying divergence with this with this change. Okay, so we have seen so far that there are torsion-free metric compatible generalized connections, but there are many. And one way of modifying them is by moving the divergence which is associated to a generalized connection via this formula. So now let me show you that this is this this other freedom coming from the divergence is enough to define the generalized rigid tensor. Okay, so given now given a generalized connection, the A generalized connection, then I can cook up some sort of curvature, naive curvature associated to it. I define for A, B, and C elements in in, in the sections of E. R D of A comma B C as just the use of formula for, for curvature. DA, DBC, replacing your connection by a generalized connection. Minus DB, DAC, minus D of Dorfman bracket, ABC. Well, this, this quantity is terrible. It's a, it's a very nasty quantity because it's, it's not tensorial. It is a differential operator on A, B, and C. Okay. But something nice that happens if is that if I now pick up a generalized metric, if I pick up now a generalized metric, G generalized metric, and I consider a D which is G compatible, then restricting this formula to B plus and B minus, this gives you a tensorial quantity. Then restriction, To be plus minus is tensorial. I mean, in, in, in each component. And I'm going to use this to define the generalized rigid tensor. And all of a sudden, things are going to become very, very explicit. So I define, given G and if a generalized metric and a divergence operator, I fix this. I consider T0 G diff as the space of towards, um, G compatible, I'm sorry, of, of generalized connections which are G compatible, which are torsion free, and furthermore have fixed divergence equals to diff. And now the proposition is that <clears throat> the following tensors are independent of D in this space. Of D in Sorry. So what are these tensors that I want to define? Well, I want to define two tensors. One, Ricci plus, which lives in B minus 12 
tensor B plus dual and one rich E minus with this which lives in B plus duo tensor B minus duo on R defined as follows rich E plus minus well let me define it for the plus and the other one is the same replacing plus by minus so this is rich E plus A minus B plus <coughs> equals the trace <coughs> of the endomorphism which sends D plus to this sort of curvature that I defined before acting on D plus A minus B plus. This is the definition. Any questions about this? When you said that this uh, quantity, which is not tensorial, it is, it, you're allowed to restrict each individual component to either V plus or V minus? Yeah. Like they don't all have to be V plus. Can, can you say it again? Like all three don't have to be in V plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're correct, yes. Yeah, yeah. You you need you need the, these two. You need A and B to live in 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 orthogonal subspaces. Yeah, for this to be correct, yeah. they have to live in different subspaces. In in mutually orthogonal subspaces. So one in B plus one one in B minus. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry, I think now now I'm confused. So yeah, what what do you mean restriction to V plus minus is tensorial then? Oh, that if you evaluate this on minus plus plus, this gives you something which is tensorial on A minus B plus and C plus. But if you evaluate on something of the form A plus B plus C plus, then this is not tensorial. It's a differential operator. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Okay, so we have this abstract, very abstract definition. Let me now go for very explicit formula, okay? I, I, I just want to show you what, what this is now, okay? So, let me give you this explicit formula. So say that you have a, your current algebra with E, a generalized metric, and div a divergence. Then using G, I have a, oops, what happened? Using G, I have a preferred isotropic splitting of my, of my G, of my current algebra E, sorry. And this determines a preferred closed tree form in the, in the Severa class of E. Also, I can write my divergence as the Riemannian divergence for the generalized metric minus some product with E, some uniquely determined section of E, which I can write explicitly as some X plus T. Right. <clears throat> now, using this, you can cook up a pair of two forms, phi plus minus, which are G of the projection with the anchor map of E plus minus. And there is a explicit formula for this. So sorry, this is phi plus minus equals. So you take the projection into plus or minus, you take the anchor map, this is a vector field, and then you pair with a metric, this gives you a one four, okay? write this in a way that you can write you can read okay and this is the anchor so this is taking uh, the, the tangent part in respect to this splitting now what you have is that Richie plus for example I want to write both yeah I want to I'm going to write both Richie plus minus acting on x minus plus gx 
This is an element in B minus or B plus, depending on whether this is plus or minus. Y plus minus GX equals the following. <clears throat> this has two parts, one which is skew symmetric and the other one which is symmetric. So this is Ricci, the ordinary Ricci tensor of the Riemannian metric determined by G minus one over fourth of the quadratic tensor that you cook up out of H, the symmetric tensor that you cook up out of, of two copies of H, plus minus a half of Lie derivative with respect to the dual, with respect to the metric of phi plus minus of, of G. This tensor is symmetric. And now you have a skew symmetric part, which is minus plus a half of the adjoint of the exterior differential acting on H, plus minus a half of the phi plus minus, minus plus of the contraction of phi plus minus two with H. And this is a completely explicit formula for, for, the, for the generalized rigid tensor with arbitrary divergence. You see, one interesting thing about this formula is that if the divergence is not there, say, I mean, if the divergence is not there, what I mean is that if I take the, the remaining divergence, if E is zero, then this, this quantity, this generalized rigid tensor corresponds to the to the Ricci tensor for the nabla plus and the nabla minus connection, which are the connections with total skew symmetric torsion, either plus H or minus H. But we, when you modify by the divergence, this, uh, this has these this, uh, extra terms. And this is important in several geometric setups. For example, general scalar geometry typically has a preferred uh, divergence given by, by, the, by, the, by the, oh, sorry the Lie form of, of the Hermitian structure that you are considering. Okay. So, okay. So to finish, let me tell you how, how you can use this to define generalized Ricci flow. What is, is there, phi, what yeah. is phi sharp? The phi with the thing above it? Is that yeah, just, yeah, is that just the action applied or the anchor applied to E? No, no. So you define this, this is a one form and then the, the sharp, is like the duality between one forms and, and vector fields given by the metric. So isn't that just give you back the anchor applied to E plus or E minus? Uh, yes, possibly it's true. I'll have to calculate that. It's possible, yes. Yeah, 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 it's true. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah, you can write it that way, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just I, I just wanted I just wanted to write a form I just wanted to write a formula that everyone understands. I mean, without any generalized general average things, this is just a one form, a metric, and 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 and, and some three form, and and that's it. Is the divergence always going to be the divergence of G minus uh, the inner product with an element of E? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. This is just because of the Leibniz rule. Divergence operators are modeled on sections of E. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So this is true. Yeah, yeah. It's an affine space. The, the, the space of divergence is an affine space model on sections of it. Yeah. So it, it's always of that form. Yeah. Okay. So we have a a, a generalized Ricci tensor. So far, so good. Now, if I go back to the abstract setup, I can cook up the following quantity. A total Ricci tensor. This is going to depend on the generalized metric of my divergence, which is the Ricci plus minus the Ricci minus, thought of as endomorphisms going from, this one going from B minus to B plus, and this one going from B plus to B minus. Okay, so this is an endomorphism, Oops, something went wrong. This is an endomorphism of E. And then I want to regard this as a vector field in a space of generalized metrics. And the problem is that 
generalize the space of the tangent space to generalize is more constrained than just endomorphism of E. So which further constraints I need to impose in order that this defines a, a good uh, vector field. So this is the definition. This is this idea is due to uh, Pablo Chevera and Frederick Wallach. So if you take E a section of of of, of a current algebra, then if you have G a generalized metric. then is an infinitesimal isometry if E Dorfman bracket with G equals to zero. And of, of course, I mean, here I mean the, 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 the commutator of, of the action of phi with, with the endomorphism G. Okay. So let me write this explicitly. What, what is this? What, what is the meaning of this thing? Well, this happens if and only if if I take the isomorphism of E with tangent plus cotangent, so that my E is of the form x plus g. Then what I need to have is a usual isometry for the metric. So the vector field part is an isometry, and furthermore, d of g equals I X H. So this is the meaning of having an infinitesimal isometry in the general sense. Okay. So now can the you say again what the commutator is. Oh yeah. So this is E. This is an endomorphism. So E G E G acting on an element A is E door from bracket with G A minus G of E A. It's just the way you, you take derivatives of an endomorphism with respect to a connection. And I'm thinking of Dorfman bracket pair with E as a connection somehow, as a, as a first order differential operator. Yeah. So now with this, with this definition in hand, I can uh, show you that um, this is proposition. Say that you have um, G and div, a generalized metric and a divergence, and suppose that E defined by uh, div G minus div is an isometry then uh, the generalized rigid tensor this total quantity given by taking the plus minus the minus belongs to the tangent at G to the space of generalized metrics on the corner. algebra. So let me say that this is the space of generalized metrics. So you see, what, what, what is the real content of this, of this thing? I mean, what we are forcing by imposing this isometry condition is the fact that, let me call this just rich for simplicity. What we are saying is that under this isometry condition, G rich is an element in lambda two of E, not only an element in the in the in the endomorphisms. It's a skew orthogonal element with respect to the ambient pairing, and this this thing tells you in particular because the rich tensor, the generalized rich tensor, always anti commutes with G, so it takes B plus by definition, it takes B plus to B minus and B minus to B plus. This condition tells you that Ricci plus and Ricci minus contain the same information. Exactly the same information. There is no, uh, there is no further thing that you can say from Ricci plus than from Ricci minus. <clears throat> and with this, we can define a generalized Ricci flow as follows. So 
definition uh, let gt lead pt uh, one parameter family of metrics of generalized metrics and divergences then <clears throat> then I define a flow which is generalized Ricci flow with divergence as follows g minus one t partial t g t equals minus two Ricci of g t lifting and of course, this, this has a very explicit, totally explicit formula. <clears throat> because if you fix H0 and then uh, uh, corresponding to some preferred splitting of E as tangent plus cotangent, sorry, I'm, I don't want to say this. What I want to say is that I fix G0. I fix the, the, the say the, the initial point for the flow. This determines a, a splitting and this determines a particular closed reform H zero. Then my family of generalized metrics is given by pairs of metrics and two forms. And then I can write everything in terms of, of these quantities and the flow takes the form partial tg equals minus two Ricci plus a half of h squared minus Lee derivative v plus sharp of g partial t b equals minus d star of h plus d of phi plus minus uh, i phi plus sharp of h. And here recall that uh, the way I define phi plus is by um, identifying, <clears throat> I mean, phi plus is given by phi plus is equal to g of pi of e plus, where my e is the difference of divergences div of gt minus div t. So this is the flow. So in particular, if I take the remaining divergence, so if this is, if this is not, uh, if this, if I'm taking the remaining divergence, so this e is zero, what I get is precisely the generalized Ricci flow as I defined it in the in the first lectures. Okay. So just to, to comment, I, I don't have much time. So I, I'm over 10 minutes over time already, but let me just tell you that what this is useful for this more uh, more uh, um, uh, more general uh, flow that I'm defining using divergences is useful for understanding gauge fixed versions of, of generalized Ricci flow. Um, very, very briefly, um, essentially this, uh, when I have a, a gauge fixed version of generalized Ricci flow, this uh, divergence is, is related to, a, to an infinitesimal automorphism of the, of the current algebra. And uh, also, it enables you to, to define solitons. And this is very important because uh, you see uh, the, 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 like the, the, the limits of, of, of generalized Ricci flow when d goes to plus infinity uh, may typically have a non-trivial divergence. And this is something which is, uh, which is a very subtle uh, part of the, of the theory. Like, for example, I mean, there are, um, we have seen, I don't know if in the previous lectures, but at least in the book, you can see some examples in, in, in the Hopf surface where the divergence 
is um, is uh, the I mean, if you identify the hub surface with S3 cross S1, then the prototypical divergence is going to be given by by the volume element in the in the circle. So yeah, I think I'm I'm kind of done. If you ask, I can tell you more, but otherwise I stop here. Great. Yeah, thanks, Mario. Thanks. thanks. Nice. Um, yeah, so are, are there any other questions? I have a, a question. Uh, I was just wondering, um, in the equation for the generalized Ricci flow, there is no yeah. equation for how the divergence evolves? Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that's a very good question. Yeah, right. So this is something Jeff and I have been uh, arguing a lot about. <laughs> because <laughs> you see, that, that's a very interesting question. Actually, there is another curvature quantity that you can cook up, which is a, which is the, a generalized scalar curvature. So there is also. There is also an scalar. Associated to a, a generalized metric and a divergence operator in a, in a canonical way. And you can use this scalar to uh, evolve your divergence. So you can pair the evolution equation for for, 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 for the generalized metric. with an evolution equation for the divergence, given just by pi star, I think I think this probably has a half. No, because it should have a two, so probably it doesn't have anything. I don't know, some factor. D of S, G, leaf. And you see, this, this evolution is as good as it could be because you are evolving the divergence. I told you that the space of a divergence is, is a space modeled on the sections of the Kuhn algebra. And I told you about isometries. But in particular, if you have an E, which is a section of, the, of a Kuhn algebra, and I have a, that this E is in the kernel of the anchor map, and further, it is an infinitesimal isometry. Then what this means is that this E is a one form, which is closed. And what I'm saying here is that I'm evolving the divergence in a way which is by exact terms. So it means that this flow is very nice. It's, it's going to preserve the the the, the isometry condition along the flow. And actually, if you write it explicitly, it corresponds in terms of uh, divergences which are uh, exact, not only closed, but this chi is exact. Then this, what this gives you, this thing is what physicists call the renormalization group flow for, for exact divergences. This thing of exact divergences, they don't say it, it's, it's, it's me. Sorry about that. Okay, but this is the, the normalization group flow. But actually, when you when you do the analysis, and Jeff can tell you more about that, when you do the analysis, these equations do not behave as nicely as they should. And the way you, you flow the divergence is by another quantity, uh, <clears throat> which uh, is like a backwards heat, heat equation. Yeah, if maybe I, I will add just a few words. Like uh, from from my point of view, it's maybe not surprising that the divergence operator is sort of um, uh, like it, it seems to be this sort of apparent freedom that you could really pick anything um, because in principle you want to study Ricci flow or generalized Ricci flow in many different gauges, and it's really in a sense corresponding to to a choice of gauge. Um, and ha having said that, yeah, so for different analytic questions, I mean, you, you, 
do couple a certain flow for the divergence operator um, to to your equation, and it and it carries some some specific geometric significance, maybe in studying some specific part of your manifold along the flow or something like this. But also, what's kind of interesting is that um, like it for generalized Ricci flow in the context of complex geometry it sort of does seem to come with a preferred divergence operator at least the the, the way it's handed to you the, there is a there is a preferred divergence and then the divergence does have a, a nice evolution equation um, or I, I mean so so the divergence is basically just the the leaf form and then so that's just evolving along with everything else and that has its own heat equation um, but so, yeah, I mean, I think uh, uh, in any case, yeah, the, these sort of gauge issues are always like a, a subtle piece of, of the analysis of these equations. And so in some sense, it is a, a broad sense of freedom and maybe different choices have different significance in a way. Um, but yeah. So what do you mean by uh, you're working in a different gauge? Does it mean that somehow they're equivalent? Uh, yeah, so, so basically, if you take maybe Mario, can you go back to like the previous page? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so like, if you start with the purple box, just like a regular generalized Ricci flow, and I guess you, you have to pull back GT by some one parameter family of isometries generated by like phi t. Um, in the appropriate sense, then so, so you have like your original solution to generalized Ricci flow, and then you have a one parameter family of, of um, I would be diffeomorphisms, but like automorphisms of V, I guess. And, and then you get a new family of metrics and then that, that new family, big GT will satisfy, you, you know, what's originally written. Yeah, if, I can write it if you, do you mind if I write it uh, like um, explicitly? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you, you fix your E, then you are going to say that GT evolves by gauge fixed generally Ricci flow. If exists the FT in automorphisms of phi, a one parameter family of automorphisms says that uh, GT tilde uh, given by FT GT FT minus one solves generalized Ricci flow. And if you write this explicitly, then uh, what happens is the following. So if you if you take your E to be Tangent plus cotangent, and you fix some some background h zero. <clears throat> then your automorphisms, your ft, is going to be generated by um, a vector field, a one parameter of vector fields, and and two forms. And this needs to satisfy that d of bt plus i xt h zero equals to zero. This is the condition for having an infinitesimal automorphism of, of, of the coronal degree. And then what happens is that um, this family GT is a gauge fix generalized Ricci flow, solves gauge fix generalized Ricci flow, if and only if the following family satisfies Ricci flow with divergence for a particular choice of divergence, if and only if uh, GT, and then you take the remaining divergence and subtract, on, you yeah, add uh, to IXT GT. So this is the this is the remaining divergence, and I'm adding this 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 one form, which comes from pairing the the metric with the vector field. So this thing satisfies a gauge fixed. Uh, sorry, this this thing satisfies general Ricci flow with divergence. 
it satisfies a generalized Ricci flow with divergence. By gauge fix, you mean that you just take the standard divergence? No, what, what I mean is that this is this GT satisfies gauge fix general Ricci flow for this one parameter family of infinitesimal automorphisms, if and only if GT with this divergence satisfies these equations I showed you before. These equations. But what is the gate? What is the gauge fixed? Flow? Oh, gauge fixed flow. It means that this modified generalized matrix satisfies the ordinary generalized Ricci flow. So okay. ordinary, ordinary generalized flow. What I mean is that this satisfies g tilde t minus one partial t g tilde t equals Ricci of minus two Ricci. Sorry, minus two Ricci of g tilde t and with the remaining divergence. So when you when you gauge fix by pulling back by a one parameter family of automorphisms, what you find is a particular choice of divergence. There is another condition here, but let me not write it because it's just a technical. But I think if I'm not mistaken, you're, you're like making two statements. I mean, for, first you're just sort of saying, I, I, can, I can modify by this one parameter family FT to move from like standard generalized Ricci flow to gauge fixed Ricci flow, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, but then you're also sort of saying that you can sort of in a sense derive the flow of the divergence, the, the yeah, one you what, wrote earlier, is that? Yeah, what, what I'm saying is that, yeah, there are three flows here. One is, one is this one. Uh, one is the ordinary generalized Ricci flow. The other one is uh, the, the gauge fixed one, which I'm not writing explicitly, which corresponds to this flow after, after gauging by an automorphism. And then I have the, the generalized Ricci flow with divergence. And what I'm saying is that if this GT is such that there exists a one parameter family of automorphisms, such that the pullback or the push forward is a, is solution of generalized Ricci flow, then the GT itself satisfies generalized Ricci flow with divergence for a particular choice of divergence determined by, by the vector field. Is it clear? Uh, yeah. I Yes, I mean, I, I think I understand. You're... Maybe, I don't know, I guess I still am not totally sure what the last equivalence is saying. I mean, the idea that I move from... Yeah, what I mean is that GT is a solution of gauge fixed general Ricci flow. It means that this equation is satisfied. Where G tilde is defined by this identity. Yeah. So the statement is if GT is such that there exists a one parameter family of automorphisms, such that it's pushed forward, satisfies generalized Ricci flow, then this occurs if and only if this generalized metric with this particular divergence oh, oh. satisfies generalized Ricci flow with divergence. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 okay. So it's the difference between picking like the canonical divergence operator and just letting the divergence yeah. operator. Yeah. So essentially, essentially what happens is that you, you are, yeah. Uh, I mean, essentially uh, it's almost true that you can absorb the, the symmetries, the infinitesimal symmetries or the gaugings in terms of the divergence operator. So the divergence operator contain a bit more of information than, than than infinitesimal, than infinitesimal symmetries, but, but not much. I mean, it's, it's, essentially, it's essentially a gauge fixed version of the flow. So it's, it's, it's precisely what you were saying. Yes. Okay, yeah, thanks. Can you go backwards if you have a, sure. a generalized Ricci flow with divergence that you can find? Can you find a, an automorphism that conjugates it into the 
the you no, know no, no, not, yeah not, not always i told you that I, I was missing some some conditions so you need some uh, some special uh, properties either either of the divergence i think the I, I, no i think the answer to your question is is right what is not correct is that if i have an arbitrary automorphism an arbitrary one parameter family of automorphism i can interpret this as as gauge fix uh, as general Ricci flow with divergence because what is true is that if i have a, a one parameter family of exact automorphisms given by integrating uh, uh, i mean what i mean is that this condition here encodes a close two form given by this if i impose that this two form is the exact then it is true that gauge fix generates Ricci flow is generates Ricci flow with divergence but I, I need to impose that otherwise it's not true so this is the other condition that you need but in the other direction the direction you were saying i think it's true so any any generate Ricci flow with divergence can be interpreted as as, as some gauge fix Yeah, anything else? Uh, this is probably a silly question, um, but this has been something I've been wondering about ever since I uh, kind of like first took a look at the paper on generalized connections. Um, the So the mixed type operators all look a lot like the, um, like the form a connection takes on a, on a Lie group with a bi-invariant metric. Um, I was wondering if there's like any anything deeper to that or if I'm just seeing things in the notation. I, I, I'm not sure if I understand. So what the NAB, you are mean that the NABLA plus and minus are like the yeah. ones which you canonically associate on a compiled Lie group, is that? Like the, yeah, like the D plus D plus minus, you have this formula in terms of the, the Dorfman bracket yeah. and the particular projections. Um, it, this is like a big, it's a vague question. Um, but yeah, I mean, that formula looks a lot like the, yeah, the way the levy Javita connection on a Lie group with a bi uh, compact Lie group with a bi-invariant metric. Um, it also has that like bracket. It's yep. just like proportional to the, the Lie bracket. Yep. Um, so I was wondering if there's any like, deeper reason for that or if it's just well yeah just yeah, yeah i think this is not a silly question let me tell you why so actually you can let, 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 me, let me see some, something which are wrong but i'm, I'm, I'm going to get to something okay uh, so let's say that k is compact uh, k is compactly group And say that I take some beam variant current algebra on it. So I take H, which is beam variant. Right? And then I can cook up a current algebra, which is just tangent plus cotangent. And this has an action of, of K on the left and on the right. Right? And uh, it turns out that the sections, you can take this on the right or on the left, but the the invariant sections of, of 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 this E on the left, for example, form something which is called a quadratic Lie algebra. So uh, this is, let me call this G. As a vector space, this is just K plus K star because these are just invariant sections of tangent plus cotangent, right? But now the Lie bracket structure here is twisted. So it is, it is, the formula is very similar to, so A plus A plus C, B plus eta equals um, AB minus <clears throat> eta add of A, meaning contraction with the lip bracket, plus C, add of b plus h of a b 
thought of H, now I regard it as an element in, in lambda 3 of K dual. Okay, so this is Ali algebra. Just by, just you take the axioms of a cool algebra, impose invariance, and because you, you have an homogeneous manifold, a transitive action, then the, the constant, I mean, invariant functions are constant. And then you recover the actions of Ali algebra with further a canonical pairing. Okay? And now you can formally define what, what, what is a generalized metric on, on here or, or, or not formally. You can define if you have a, if you have a, a generalized metric B plus on E, which is K invariant on the left, for example, then uh, this induces a generalized metric on this Lie algebra, meaning that your G splits now as B plus plus B minus. And with respect to the Lie bracket in this Lie algebra, these connections, these canonical connections read precisely as the use of formula. What I mean is that, uh, I mean, uh, you have these mixed operators are A plus B plus plus and A plus B minus minus, where this bracket is uh, is now in the Lie bracket on this in this big Lie algebra. And now if you restrict to the B plus and B minus bundles, you recover the two plus and minus connections. But uh, yeah, what I'm saying is that in the invariant case, there is a natural, a natural, uh, a natural ambient Lie algebra where you can cook up your your generalized connections in in a in a Lie theoretical sense. So yeah, I, I think there is a conceptual explanation for this using this this thing. Okay, anything else? Okay, well, yeah, if not, uh, maybe let's just thank Mario one more time for a nice series of lectures. Thank you. Uh, and I guess uh, we'll call it, and next week uh, I will begin um, discussing the analysis, more analytic side of, of generalized Ricci flow. And for better or worse, it will be uh, less generalized and more Ricci flow. So, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so anyways, yeah, thanks everyone, and I'll see you uh, next week. Thanks. Thanks.